This is the end of a story. A story of pain and loss. A story of blessing. A story of hatred. A story of respect. A story of ruthlessness. And a story of patience. This is a story between two rivals. A Sith and a Jedi. One loathing revenge. And one that had let go of the past. Two opposites. And yet they are so similar. Let's go back to where it all began. To where it all started. No. Farther back. To the very beginning. In 57 BBY, a young male was born on the planet Sujon and named Obi-Wan Kenobi. He was a human, and later in his life he said he remembered his father's hands and a baby that he thought was his brother. But he couldn't remember because he was taken at such a young age. He was taken to the Jedi Temple and trained with other younglings by Master Yoda, learning several simple force abilities as young as 3 years old, which was in the year 54 BBY. The same year as another young male was born, known as Maul. He was a knight brother, a Zabrak, a son of Mother Talzin, on the planet of Dathomir. Later in his life, he claimed to have a real name, but had forgotten it. He had a sense of feeling for the trees, for it was the force he had inside of him. But he also had this deep, inner anger, pulling him towards the dark side. Nonetheless, he was afraid of Sidious, for he and Mother Talzin were allies during the Clone Wars. And he was afraid of the bond that Mother Talzin was making with him. Obi-Wan was a rebellious child. Unlike his older counterpart, he was always getting into trouble. But he still respected the Jedi Council. So Yoda, knowing him and his tendencies to break rules, at around 44 BBY, he chose Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn to train Kenobi as his Padawan learner when he was 13 years old. Qui-Gon goes on later to say in the beginning of his training with Obi-Wan that they were a mismatch because of their different styles of handling a situation. But in their lessons, Jinn taught Kenobi that there was a strength and nobility in restraint. And as time passed, Kenobi's demeanor shifted to become more serious and respectful of the council in contrast to Jin's usual way of approaching situations, based on his instincts in the present. Both carried differing philosophies on focusing on the future versus the present, and interpreted the Force in varying ways. Despite their differences, Kenobi strove to be a good student, and supported his master's hobbies regarding ancient Jedi prophecy research. They grew a lot together, helping each other. Obi-Wan was a very determined student, spending a lot of time in dojos practicing techniques Qui-Gon had taught him. He also respected his master very much, even though they thought differently most of the time. Maul's struggle with anger eventually caught the attention of Sidious. Around 40 BBY, Sidious ordered Towson to give up Maul to a keeper, threatening not to follow through on his promise to make her his apprentice. So she reluctantly agreed, as Maul hearing this ran away but was soon caught and imprisoned, then beaten by his brothers. But unbeknownst to him, this was all orchestrated by Sidious. And like the Sith Lord predicted, Maul leaned hard into the dark side, using it to break out of his cell. Maul went to the selection arena. This was where Sidious was choosing one of them to be his apprentice. And upon seeing Sidious, Maul burst out in anger. And using the dark side of the force to force choke the two brothers and then the keeper of his cell. All in front of Sidious and Towson. Beyond pleas at Maul's progress and potential, Sidious declared Maul the winner and his new apprentice to Towson's dismay. Sidious took Maul and left Dathomir. Under Sidious' supervision, Maul trained as a Sith Apprentice, Sith Warrior, and Sith Assassin, eventually being given the title Darth Maul. For years, Darth Maul was trained to become the weapon of the Sith and even learned to use a dual-bladed lightsaber, eventually crafting his own. During his training, Sidious took Maul to Malakor to bear witness to a great battle that occurred there between the Jedi and the Sith. Maul mastered his anger, letting it burn in him, and under his master's supervision began to turn his anger into hate. Maul's Sith training made him long for revenge against the Jedi, which had defeated the Sith on Malakul a millennia earlier. With his master, Darth Maul hoped to destroy the Jedi and restore the Sith to galactic power. I have a bad feeling about this. I don't sense anything. In 32 BBY, by the time Jin considered Kenobi to be ready for his trials, they were sent to negotiate with the Trade Federation, who had set up a blockade around the planet of Naboo. Kenobi and Jin were brought to a conference room, 
where Protocol George informed them that the Trade Federation representative would be with them shortly, and invited the pair to make themselves comfortable. But poisonous dioxic gas was pumped into the room, forcing them to hold their breaths. However, Kenobi and Jin escaped into the hallway and were forced to flee into a nearby ventilation shaft, using force speed to escape. The two escaped to Naboo's surface by stowing away on separate landing crafts in the hangar bay, after discovering a droid army preparing to invade the planet of Naboo. As they made to the surface, the two Jedi came across a group of battle droids, taking Queen Amidala and several others to a war camp. And they had quickly engaged the droids, freeing the Queen and her companions. Following this, the Jedi moved to a starship hangar, intending to use a Naboo starship to take the Queen to Coruscant. During the escape, the ship's hyperdrive was damaged, forcing them to land on Tatooine for repairs. At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have revenge. Amidala was a necessity for the Sith plans. The Queen needed to sign a treaty that would legitimize the illegal occupation of Naboo. Sidious dispatched Maul to find the Queen and the Jedi. Maul traced a distress call from the governor of Naboo, which Queen Amidala received on Tatooine. With his master's permission, Maul traveled to Tatooine to locate the Queen. He landed in the desert with his personal starship, and the Sith Lord attacked Qui-Gon Jinn, and the two engaged in lightsaber combat. It was a short but intense duel, Maul using his terrifying agility and ferocity to tire Jinn out with his vicious lightsaber technique. Just as Jinn had succumbed to Maul's power and fury, Maul was looking to finish the Jedi off. The Queen's ship came to the rescue, and Jinn jumped aboard, leaving the Sith fuming with rage on the sand. Upon the Jedi's arrival on Coruscant, Jin and Kenobi went directly to the Jedi Council to report the mysterious attacker. Maul, meanwhile, returned to Naboo by order of his master, where Amidala and the Jedi also returned in order to fight the Federation Occupation Force. The battle for the capital reached the Royal Palace, where Maul was waiting for Jin and Kenobi. We'll handle this. The Sith Lord fought the Jedi in the palace hangar before moving them into the Generator Complex. The duel raged on throughout the Generator Rooms, with Maul dominating the duel. He did, however, give ground in order to lead the Jedi through the complex. Maul separated the Jedi by knocking Kenobi down several levels, and Kenobi was unable to catch up to Maul and Jin due to the laser wall standing in his way. Taking advantage of their separation, Maul fought Jin alone and eventually stabbed Master through the torso, killing him. Filled with rage, Kenobi retaliated against the Sith. However, the Dathomirian Zabrak gained the upper hand and knocked Kenobi into a nearby shaft where he was barely able to grab onto a knob jutting out from the side. Maul used this opportunity to kick his lightsaber into the shaft. Despite his predicament, Kenobi was able to use his force powers to jump over Maul and pull Jin's lightsaber to him to cut the Sith in half, whose body fell down the shaft, presumably dead. Kenobi then ran to his master's side as he died in his arms. Your legs, that scum! He took them from me! He took them! Who took them? Jedi. Jedi. However, through his hate and rage, Maul managed to survive being cut in half. A combination of his Night Sister magics, Dathomir and physiology, and Sith tenacity served to keep him tethered to life, even as his sanity began to leave him. Maul's shattered body was dumped onto the junkyard world of Lotho Minor, where he lived in the bowels of the planet. There he utilized discarded metal to fashion for himself a six-limbed apparatus that allowed him to walk again. Mother Towson knew that Maul had survived during the Clone Wars. She told his brother, Savage Opress. Opress found Lotho Minor and discovered his crazed brother living there, but Maul did not know who Opress was and barely had a hold on his own identity, frequently breaking out into fits of laughter and sobbing. All that remained of the one-time Sith Lord was his lust for revenge against the Jedi. To restore Maul's memories, he took him to Dathomir, where Mother Towson repaired Maul's mind and gave him a pair of cybernetic legs through an incantation, using parts of the Separatist droids destroyed during the Battle of Dathomir. I will make sure you stay awake long enough to feel every single cut. Your death will be beyond excruciating. You will suffer as I have suffered. Maul sent a message to the Jedi Council, threatening to execute innocent people on Redona if Kenobi did not come to face him. Kenobi arrived in a burning village with Maul waiting. Though the Jedi Master was unsure if Maul was who he claimed to be, the Dathomirian proved it by telling him their shared experience on the Battle of Naboo. The two engaged in a fight and Kenobi was overpowered at the hands of his old enemy, who had the help of Opress. Kenobi was then brought aboard the brother's ship. 
who intended to have the Jedi awake so that his death would be as painful as the last 10 years of Maul's life had been. However, Kenobi was rescued by Asajj Ventress who was trying to collect the bounty on Oppressor's head. After being freed, Kenobi used one of her lightsabers to do Maul on the cargo area of their ship, though he almost gave in to his rage. Kenobi gained the upper hand with the help of Ventress and together they managed to trap Maul and Oppress in the back of the ship, leaving their brother stranded, but alive in space. A few weeks later, after stealing valuables on a space station, the brothers traveled to Falorum, where they bribed a squad of pirates into joining them. Although some joined, others questioned Maul and Oppress's motives and were killed as a result. As Hondo and Naku, the pirate leader, was forced to watch. Eventually, the brothers faced off against Kenobi and Adi Galia, a fellow member of the Jedi High Council, who tracked them there. After a duel that left Galia dead, Kenobi lured the brothers into the pirate base, where they continued their duel in an isolated passage, when Oppress had his arm cut off. Maul used the force to push Kenobi down the tunnel, causing cave-in before ordering a retreat. The brothers promptly escaped. I know where you're from. I've been to your village. I know the decision to join the dark side wasn't yours. The Night Sisters made it for you. Silence! You think you know me? It was I who languished for years, thinking of nothing but you. Nothing but this moment. And now, the perfect tool for my vengeance is in front of us. I never planned on killing you. But I will make you share my pain, Kenobi. After a few months, following Maul's takeover of the planet Mandalore, Kenobi was summoned to meet with Yoda and Kiari Mundi in the communications room. The two showed him a transmission that had been sent by Satine Kreese from Mandalore. In the message, she stated that her government has been overthrown by rogue criminals. Yoda and Kiari Mundi expressed reluctance to take part in the eternal affairs of Mandalore without the Senate approval but Kenobi chose to go to Mandalore anyways. After infiltrating the place and liberating his friend, Maul and the Mandalore forces chased the two of them and ordered his forces to bring Kenobi and the Duchess to the palace and the throne. Maul taunted Kenobi to give in to the dark side, all the while holding Kreese in a forced grip. Kenobi angrily refused and told Maul he had been to the Sith Lord's village on Dathomir. Kenobi further brought up Maul's horrific past by saying that it had not been Maul's decision to join the dark side, but rather the Night Scissors forced it upon him. The comment struck a nerve, angering Maul and causing him to lash out. He reminded Kenobi that it was the Jedi Master who truly made Maul suffer for over 10 years, that it is time for Kenobi to share in his agony. At that moment, Maul activated the Darksaber and stabbed it through Duchess's chest. Kreese died in Kenobi's arms before Maul ordered that Kenobi be taken to prison to contemplate his loss. Kenobi later escaped with the help of Bo-Katan, who revealed herself to be the Duchess's sister. This would be the last time they would see each other for a very, very long time. Palpatine would kill Maul's brother, and after the fall of the Jedi Order, Maul would become a leader of crime syndicates, and Kenobi had gone into hiding on Tatooine with Anakin's now-turned-Vader's son, namely Luke Skywalker. Maul became obsessed with the destruction of Sidious and his revenge on Kenobi, knowing that he could not underestimate either enemy. Maul searched for a Sith holocron and it eventually led him to the planet of Malachor. He would find the powerful weapon he sought in the Sith Temple. Maul got frustrated with his inability to enter the temple. However, his ship became wrecked, leaving Maul a prisoner on the planet for years. Around the year 3 BBY, an inquisitor known as the Eighth Brother tracked Maul to Malachor. It was also the time that Maul came in contact with the Jedi apprentice Ezra Bridger, to whom he told that he had crashed his ship years prior, leaving him trapped without contact from the wider galaxy. Introducing himself as the old master, whilst also posing as a feeble elderly man, also seeking to destroy the Sith. Maul offered to help Bridger claim the holocron, revealing it was located inside of the temple. Maul began manipulating the young Jedi apprentice, when later he would find and fight Ezra's master, when Maul declared that he would finish off the Jedi quickly. However, using his other senses amplified by the Force, Kanan Jarrus caught Maul's arm and tripped him, where the Night Brother fell from the temple to the ground below. Maul survived the fall and eventually fled the planet using one of the fallen Inquisitor's TIE Fighters. Following the destruction of the Synth Temple on Malachor, realizing his plans were in ruins, Maul took a personal interest in Bridger. His influence had a profound effect on Bridger, who drifted closer to the dark side. He lives. <laughs> he lives. In 2 BBY, Maul surfaced and continued to pursue the rebels. Bridger and Kanan Jarrus contacted Harris Syndulla, the ghost pilot, 
and found out that Maul had taken her and the rest of the crew hostage. In exchange for the friends' lives, Maul demanded that the Jedi give him both the Sith and Jedi holocron, to which they agreed. Maul went to meet Bridger and quietly instructed one of his droids to execute the rebel crew. Swapping holocrons, Maul and Bridger sat down on the floor and opened the devices, seeking to combine them and have their questions answered. After combining the holocrons, Bridger, who wanted to know the key to destroying the Sith, saw locations both familiar and unfamiliar, while Maul saw nothing. Bridger exclaimed that he saw twin suns, and Jairus implored his apprentice to look away, while Maul incited the Jedi to focus. Heeding his master's warning, Bridger closed his eyes, causing the energy from the holocrons to explode, giving Maul a chance to escape. As Maul proceeded back to his ship, he realized what he had seen in the holocrons, and repeated the phrase, he lives. Our futures converge on a planet with two suns. We can walk that path together as friends, as brothers. Weeks later, Maul then offered to show Ezra how to destroy the Sith. With Kanan's reluctant approval, Ezra complied with Maul's ultimatum and departed with Maul. Maul took his unwilling apprentice to the homeworld of Dathomir. Maul took Ezra to the ruins of the Night Sister's lair. As Maul led Ezra into his cave dwelling, he explained that the only way to retrieve the information was to merge their minds again in a ritual. Maul had the cave filled with relics from the past, including a damaged portrait of Duchess Satine Kreese, as well as the Darksaber, a Mandalorian symbol of power. For the ritual, Maul and Ezra drank glasses of magic water, which caused their eyes to turn green and shoot bright rays. As a result, Maul and Ezra discovered that his nemesis Obi-Wan Kenobi was hiding on the planet with twin suns, and that Kenobi held the key to destroy the Sith. I am lost, and yet I can feel his presence so close, so close. I can see him in my mind's eye. Kenobi. Kenobi! Maul eventually made his way to Tatooine, using knowledge from the two holocrons months earlier in search of his old nemesis, Obi-Wan, Kenobi. While searching for him in the desert wastes, Maul realized that he was lost, exhausted from his search and contemplating the thought of dying in the desert. He collapsed in the sand and started screaming Kenobi's name in desperation. However, he found a renewed sense of determination and resumed his search for Kenobi. Knowing that he was unable to find his own enemy on his own, he planned to draw him out, using the matrix he had taken from the Sith Holocron to reach out to his apprentices, Ezra Bridger, Bridger, inspired by the vision sent by Maul, traveled to Tatooine to prevent the former Sithor from killing Kenobi. The Jedi Apprentice also hoped to recruit the old Jedi Master to join the growing rebellion. As Ezra arrived, he was attacked by Tuskens, as Maul came and cut down all the Tuskens, and convinced Ezra to travel into the desert. Ezra and Chopper traveled into the desert, but the two collapsed due to a sandstorm, and a short while later, Bridger and Chopper were discovered by Kenobi. Constructing a small campfire, Kenobi recharged Chopper from a portable light, and tended to Bridger's wounds. After Ezra awoke, Kenobi told the boy that Maul had manipulated Ezra into leading the former Sith Lord to Kenobi. And at that moment, Maul arrived to settle the score with his old arch enemy. Having led Maul to Kenobi, Bridger insisted to fight the former Sith himself, but Kenobi commanded Ezra to return to his friends. Remarking on Kenobi's lackluster living condition, Maul said, Look what has become of you, a rat in the desert. Look what I have risen above. Maul taunted his old rival by wondering aloud whether death would in fact be a mercy compared to Kenobi's lifestyle. Kenobi was unperturbed and responded by stating that Maul defined himself by his empty desires to dominate, kill, and possess. He had nothing at all. Maul, stung by this verbal barb, ignited his lightsaber and shook the ground in front of Kenobi's small campfire, showering it with sand and snuffing it out. The former Sith Lord speculated on what could have brought Kenobi to Tatooine, knowing it was not simply to hide, but deduced that he was there to protect something, or someone. Stirred to action by Maul's threatening implications towards his charge, Kenobi activated his lightsaber and assumed the Sarisu ready stance. Maul in turn activated the second blade of his weapon in the two enemies' locked cases. Kenobi switched from his stance of Sarisu to his mix of Sarisu and Ataru, and then switched to fully Ataru and Maul recognizes Kenobi's stance as having belonged to Kenobi's old master, Qui-Gon Jinn. 
He charged Kenobi and the adversaries exchanged two rapid strikes before Maul brought the hilt of his blade up to strike Kenobi's face, the same attack which had allowed him to kill Jin decades earlier. However, Kenobi had been prepared for Maul's strategy and he brought his lightsabers down in an overhand strike, carving a deep lethal cut into Maul's chest. A shocked Maul looked down at his wound, dropping to one knee, but Kenobi caught him before he could fall to the ground and held him. Knowing that his death was inevitable this time, Maul then begged his sworn enemy to answer. Tell me, is he the chosen one? He is. And with his final breath states, He will avenge us. With that, after so many years of rage and anguish, Maul finally passed away peacefully, believing that his master's wrath would soon be over. As a final gesture of mercy, Kenobi closed his eyes and laid him to rest. That's the end. Hope you enjoyed. And if you did, you might want to check out one of my what ifs. I have many on this channel, but check this one out. It's what if Anakin became the Emperor. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.